Hi everyone, so recently I got asked the question, how can a form designer pull some properties from the user profile database in Office 365 using the new responsive forms designer for Office 365? So if you're not aware, when you have a user account in Office 365, that is consumed into what's called the user profile database. Now that is a repository of people or profiles and it looks something like this. So it uses my account name but then also has first name, last name. Some of these properties are from Active Directory and then some of these are extended through SharePoint. So things like, um, what have we got here? I think there's things like my personal interest, my birthday, skills, past projects, all these sort of things that are extended with SharePoint. Now, if I had a form and I wanted to show my title, for instance, or if I wanted to show my manager, we have the capability of doing that through Nintex Forms, the old and the new responsive, as well as classic. But if we come to the Forms Designer here, we're just got a simple one here. So I will create a new variable, create a variable, and we'll call it uh, Manager. I want to look up the manager. So I turn, I type in User Profile Lookup, and I put uh, Current User. Now I'm just going to use my own uh, login for the moment. Use my login name and now what it's expecting is a property. So if I go to use a profile here, click on it, it's saying we'll pass in an email address and then also the property. Now what it means by property is back to the user profile which is these properties here. Now don't assume that this is the name of that property because they're usually not. In SharePoint land Manager is manager, so that's easy. So, but if you go back, oh, whoops, let's go. I think we might have it somewhere here. Admin. So, if we go to, bear with me. I think it's in classic features, and we go user profile open. And so we've got manage user profiles and manage user. Sorry, manage user properties and manage user profiles. So. Uh, where are we? Let's find it. So that's my, is my profile properties. So I want to look at my user profile properties. We want to just want to see some of them. So as I was saying, uh, work email might be something different. It might not have a space. It might have a different name. So when we're building this into this profile here, I know that we saw before, which was uh, manager is manager. So I can just copy a text there, put manager in. Okay, so I can create and insert that variable. Now, hopefully this is loading up and it's taking a little while in SharePoint land. So now we've got that. So I've got that variable. Now I can come to the designer and I could say, I've got a bit of a scenario built up here. I'm working on something. I'll drag on a label just to, just, just to debug this for the moment. So I'm gonna to go to label and I click insert and I'm gonna insert my variable I created before. And we're gonna go publish that. Okay. Form is published successfully. I'll go to my form and clicking on new. Okay, so now we see that my my manager's profile is coming through. Now what you'll see is um, you have the claims based auth section, uh, membership, big boss, so on and so forth. Now. This isn't super useful to me, but this is what we saw before around, uh, here we go here. So here's all the properties. They've got very different names. So if I look at uh, work phone, for instance, I come in to edit this. Let's like, let that load in the background. It seems to be going a bit slow at the moment. So where was I? So this is coming through as the property of that person. So we were looking at um, my profile property before and hope this is gonna load. So work phone doesn't have a space and there's certain Idiosyncrasy, idiosyncrasies that actually do that. So if we go back, uh, manage user profile. So we'll open this one up. So if I look in for Ewan, okay, I'm gonna get edit my profile, and now I can see all the properties that I have. This is what we were looking at before. And so Al is my manager. But that comes back as this, which is the claims based auth user property. So then let's say I didn't want to show my manager's um, profile or that, that property. I want to extend that a, a further. So I would say what I want to see is maybe their, their name. What is their name? So I'm going to go back. 
Oh, let's go forward. Close that one for a second. Let's go back and find the name property. So I need to go back. So user profile property. So I want to go and get the my manager's full name. So I need to have, I guess, a nested user profile lookup. So first I need to find full name. So name and name comes in at, let's have a look. While we wait for that. So we'll come back to the variable and it's just loaded as I went away from it. So we've got this first one. Now that's going to give us the, the manager's um, user object. But I want to actually, I want to actually get that manager's uh, full name. So I'm going to go user profile lookup and I'm going to pass in that context there. And then I'm going to go comma and I'm going to pass in the property that we're looking at. So what's the property? Preferred name. So it's not actually name, it's preferred name. And make sure you get the capitalization right. P -E -R -P -R -E. Name. I think that looks correct. Let's just check in. Yep. Okay, closing the bracket. We're good to go. So what's happening now is saying user profile lookup, look up from the response of this, which is my manager's, uh, or the response of this, sorry, is my manager's user uh, profile or property. And then I go and pass in preferred name. So we're going to update that and we're going to publish the form. Okay, pressing OK. We'll come back here. Now we can just re we can just reopen this form because that variable will get recalculated every time that form opens. Okay, so now we can see his his first name's coming through. I don't know why he's only got a first name, so we can come back and actually adjust. And so we could say first name and last name, for instance. Let's go and check what first name and last name might be. So we could then do a concatenation of those two. So we'll go back to the variable. No, his first name is Al. So then what we could do is preferred name. So that's his, actually his first name. I've got the wrong one. I wanted his, okay. So first name looks like that. So we could go first name, first name. And then we could put a, a space and then another one. And we could pretty much pass in that see the same function really, except we don't want first name, first name. So we we'll go and paste that in there. Okay, so now we're looking for the last name property. I thought there was a full name property. Name, last name, first name. I was sure there's a full name property. Anyway, we're just going to use the last name for the moment just for the sake of this demo. I'm just going to take a step in the dark and say it's last name while we wait for that. And it's just loaded. Yep, it's last name. Okay, so we're going to put last in there. Let's update. So. This is just a concatenation for those two properties with the space in the middle. So we're going to go update, go back, publish. Okay, successful. Again, just go back to the form, press F5, let's see who my, see who my boss is. Al Pacino, there you go. So my boss is Al Pacino, so his name's come through. Now what if I wanted to go and populate Al Pacino in here based on the selection I've got in here? That's slightly different. So what we could do is we come through to rules and we'd say, let's say a new rule, we say if people picker one uh, doesn't equal blank, then we're going to say people picker two value is equal to and insert a function. So we'll create another one, we'll go um, manager lookup for people picker. So again, we go user profile lookup and I pass in the people picker one actually. So I pass in the people picker one and then we get manager because we know now the property is called manager. Create, insert, and away we go. We'll just give the rule a name. Populate people picker. Else, let's set the people picker value to nothing. All right, so let's publish the form. Okay, coming back here. Now, the first people pick is going to be blank on load, so nothing's going to happen, but the label is going to calculate automatically. Now, if I go and put my name in here, I select myself, and there we go. We can see Al comes through automatically. We can see Al has got that property and it's coming through it, so populating my manager straight away. So that's pretty much what you can do with user profile lookup runtime function. Sorry, the user profile function now has changed its name. Now, 
the one thing you've got to keep in mind is you have to make sure that you're you have given permissions to the Nintex Forms app uh, permissions to the user profile service. So I just clicked on the app tile here. So the Nintex Forms for Office 365 tile. If you come into here, you'll see this page here. Some people may have a form admin icon here. Now you still can access this here. So if you're if you're an, ad, an admin, click on allow application access to user profiles. Now I've already done this before. However, if you haven't, make sure it's got trust. Otherwise, when it does the user profile lookup, it'll just come back as blank. So if you're having any issues with this, first step, just make sure you've given trust to Nintex Forms to go and query the user profile service because at the end of the day, the user profile service is like a, a separate database, separate to SharePoint. So it's a different trust level. So we need to give trust to it. So I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, let me know in the comments um, and if, or if you'd like to see anything else, let me know in the comments. Cheers.